second word of Jesus says, um, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, Luke 23, 43. I'll briefly read the entire uh, the passage around it so that we have some context. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It said that Luke is the only gospel that talks about this particular interaction between the thief and Jesus among all the four gospels. The other three gospels or two gospels talk about two criminals being crucified on either side of Jesus. And they all talk, all the gospels talk about both the criminals being throwing insults at Jesus. They talk about how they were along with rest of the religious leaders, the bystanders, or the soldiers. They were all making fun of him, including the two, um, including the two thieves. But here in Luke, we, talk, we, we get a closer view of what this one particular thief had an interaction with Jesus. It begs me to think that most likely, before this thief had this interaction with Jesus... He was also in that crowd along with the rest of the uh, people, right? And he was probably saying, along with everybody, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. You were going to destroy the temple. Save yourself now. Come down from the cross and save us. So you see all these various things that even the other thief was saying. And you wonder, what happened? He was probably very angry. You know, back it also, and maybe there are other translations of the Bible, it says that he was a revolutionary. Those guys were revolutionary. It begs me to think how, um, just a background, you know. Um, there is a good chance that, that this thief grew up in a Jewish home. You know, there is a good chance that he had a Jewish mom, a Jewish dad. He grew up reading the Torah. He grew up hearing about the Messiah coming. He grew up hearing that the Messiah is going to come and rescue them. He grew up probably saying that, you know, but he also grew up under the Roman oppression. And that's and high taxes and how the Romans were oppressing the Jews. He probably grew a lot of anger and that's probably where he started to steal from the temple because these religious leaders are not doing anything anyways. No, these Romans are oppressing us anyways. You know, and he probably got into becoming a thief that way. But now he is, we see him on the cross, almost anger, angry at the Roman government because they are doing this to him because he probably feels justified doing what he did. And that's why he was angry. But now along this, if I, if I may just take my imagination from if the thieves and Jesus were on the cross from 9, to 9 a.m. to 12 noon, I would probably think that this conversation that the thief had with Jesus was probably around 11 or 11.30, towards the end. You know why? Because he was probably realizing, oh my God, I'm actually dying. There's no time for me to be anger, angry anymore. What am I going to get? You know. And at that time, when he heard the first word which, my, which our sister was sharing, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. That's the time where he saw the power that Jesus held in his hand about how he was able to forgive even in spite of all of that. So I would like to just take your attention to the fact that, you know, how, how the thief, if, if we look back and read the, read the passage, he, 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 he says to the other thief, don't you fear God? That's the very first step that the thief was taking. He had a fear for God. The next step, he said, he acknowledges his sinful nature. I deserve this. And in three, we, then he says, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. 
you know he acknowledges the lordship of the lord jesus christ you see a perfect step by step of how he accepts the lord jesus and uh, may i say this this is the only person in the entire bible that jesus ever assures the salvation of anybody you know that what a glorious moment that is and i'm going to close very soon here just in contrast while this thief was being assured of salvation may i tell you what do you think was happening with judas iscariot who was the closest disciple of jesus contrast that with, with this thief who spent all his life 33 years probably stealing and you know doing all sorts of wrong things judas had the closest moment with jesus he walked with jesus 3 3 and a half years saw miracles saw him heal saw him heal the lame open the eyes of the blind raise the dead fed 5000 people had jesus wash his feet and at the last minute when he he felt bad what did judas do judas instead of running to jesus he could have easily been accepted and jesus would have equally said the same words judas you will be with me in paradise instead judas where did he go he ran to the pharisees and say take your 30 coins take my 30 coins take this 30 coins these are not i don't want them what was judas trying to do he was trying to undo the things that he did in his own power in his own strength he thought by returning by his own power returning the gold coins that he took he was going to maybe make right with god friends i would like to just give to for a non believer we find uh the words that the thief had said but for a believer if you and i have known christ for a long time may i say i will read this one verse from galatians 5 13 and i will close galatians chapter 3 verse 3 are you so foolish after beginning with the spirit are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort paul asked the same to the galatians may i ask each one of you whenever if we are all know christ please let's all approach his throne of grace with confidence not ha- or not trying to achieve um achieve intimacy by our own effort but by knowing that god forgives our sins and we can approach his throne not by our own efforts but by his grace and mercy okay uh, i'll say this one last thing there is no other person who was seeking for help from jesus throughout the gospels always says like the blind man said jesus son of david the lame man said jesus son of so and so but this man on the thief on the cross said jesus there's no title because he was experiencing intimacy with the lord at that time close with that may we all find that intimacy with jesus as we see him on the cross